This is Larry from Tepper Mint. Today we're going to be looking at this gorgeous Olympia. Thank you, Lily. We picked up this SM8 a few months ago, and it's in really good shape. It's more of a modern design compared to the older SM3s and SM4s, which had kind of the curvy body with more chrome accents. This is a little bit more modern looking. They did this particular color scheme, I think, from 1965 to 1967, and it had the teal green platen knobs, teal green uh, keys on the shift keys, and then teal green here on the carriage lock, which you just flip forward to get it off carriage lock. And so anyway, it's a uh, more modern design, but it's absolutely rock solid as far as typing goes. And it's one improvement that they made with the SM8 compared to the prior versions, the including the SM7, SM2, and 3, is that the SM8 is basket shift. So it has a really light basket shift, very easy on the pinkies compared to the heavier carriage shift of the earlier Olympias. The other thing I like about the SM8 and the SM9 is that at least all of them that I've come across in the wild still have platens that feel like new. So you don't have to worry about paying another hundred bucks or so to get the platen recovered. Uh, this one is just feels soft like it came out of the factory. So two pluses of the SM8 over the earlier versions are the usually soft platen and the basket shift. Mechanically, it's similar to the earlier machines and they feel similar as far as the typing feel and the typing action, again, other than the basket shift. So just a quick look here. Here's your tabulator. The difference between the SM8 and the SM9 is that the SM8 has manual tab stops on the back. There they are. They don't come off so you don't have to lose them or you don't lose them like maybe on a Smith Corona where the little tab stops can get lost. Easy, just push and slide wherever you want the tabs set. So I kind of like the simplicity of the manual tab stops compared to the key set tabulator they had on the SM9. They put the plus and minus keys on the side of the space bar for setting and clearing the tabs. And it, it's slightly uglier. I kind of like the clean lines of the SM8. So over here, here's your carriage release. And you can hear it's got a nice loud bell. Here's your paper release if you get the paper in crooked. Kind of a big one. Just lift it up and scoot your paper. It does lift the paper bale up slightly when you push it up, which is kind of a nice touch. Unlike uh, the SM3s, 4s, and 7s, this one has a pull-up paper support. It's not the spring-loaded switch blade that you push and it pops out. This one you just lift up and push down. Coming over to this side of the machine here, here's your line space selector. I can't remember, it's either single, double, and triple space or single, space and a half, double space. Probably single, space and a half, and double space. And then the dot position, if you push it all that way, releases the clicks so that you can make your fine line adjustments and type where you want and then go back to your line spacing. The variable line spacer over here does the same thing. So you feel the clicks and then when you pull out the knob, the clicks go away. So when you use the variable line spacer, you lose your prior line spacing setting. If you use this guy up here, it retains it. So up here, you have a clear plastic ruler guide on the back. Sometimes those are broken and missing, so it's nice to have that. Push and slide margins. You squeeze them together like that. It has a little red pointer that shows exactly where you are in the scale. So just pinch, pinch and slide. It does have a paper guide over here for where you want the left side of the paper to be. I usually keep it on zero. And I'm going to pass off the camera to Ailey and show you how that comes up. So kind of nice. This just pops up. These little guys up here 
Uh, this one. This one here, I believe, yeah, comes down and is retained by this spring down there. So that's what keeps it in place when it's closed. And here you can see the tight basket. We have this thing uh, completely apart. It's been cleaned, tuned, and adjusted. And there you can see the basket shift. So no touch control on an SM8. I think that's another difference between this and the SM9. But the typing feel on these is so great. I would never want to adjust it anyway, or at least it wouldn't bother me not to have that adjustment. It does have little forks here for the ribbon to go through. And you can put eyelets on the ribbon, and that'll trip the ribbon reverse fork. But I think this was designed to work without eyelets, and this ribbon does not have the eyelets in. And when it gets to the end of the ribbon, just the geometry of the ribbon going from here to here over to here, it's more of a triangle, and the, the tension will cause that to move over and reverse the direction of the ribbon spools so uh, let's see I think that's it for under the hood it does have if you come up here Ailey these little clear ruler guides that help keep the paper flush to the platen and I think that's about it it does have a little eraser table here just a pop-up eraser table that people use to make their changes hopefully the new owner doesn't do that because the eraser shavings fall down into the machine and make a mess. And we'll go ahead and tip it up and show you under the machine. Nice and clean. The feet here are in good shape. It's a little hard, but they're not cracked. And it's hard to find off-the-shelf replacements for these, unlike some machines where you can go get rubber stoppers at the store. These are a special shape, so thankfully, even though they're they're not super soft and squishy, the feet are still in good shape. And you can see the serial number down there by my thumb. So anyway, uh, just a quick note also, these little rubber bumpers under the space bar right there, there's one on each side, are still soft and squishy, so I didn't have to replace those. So... We'll go ahead and do a quick look at the case and then we'll do a typing test. So here's the original case, which is in excellent shape. It's, I don't know if it's real leather, probably fake leather, uh, but no tears at all. It's kind of neat. It's got this sticker down here. If you can, I don't know if that'll focus or not, but it says always open zipper completely actually it says always open zip completely and the reason they tell you that is that if you don't open the zipper all the way around to the side of the machine and the zippers only open here and you try to open the case that's how these get ripped a lot of times so make sure you unzip it and then completely zip it all the way to the other side and again, unzip it all the way before you open it. There you can see typewriter and case made in Western Germany. Has two little foam blocks here at the top. Because there's no, unlike some of the cases, the hard cases that have locks in the bottom that secure the typewriter in place. This one just sits on the soft bottom and is held in place with these foam blocks. And then... Kind of nice that it has the original instruction manual. You can get replacements of these online, but it's always kind of nice to have the, the original goodies. And also, hopefully that shows up. It says Olympia, and it has the original cleaning kit. A little soft cloth and two brushes. So we were happy to get those and since this machine is going to its new forever home shortly, I think the new owner will be happy to get that. So that's a quick look at the case. And now for the type test. So you can probably get away with one sheet since the platen is still nice and soft, but I just do two anyway. And you'll see 
Oh, I really like this machine. And that's the cursive script typeface. We'll do a couple lines on black. bell and if I keep going there's the line lock so it won't let you type into the margin unless you push margin release and we'll do a couple lines on red Oops, too fast. Okay, pass the camera off. I love the feeling of the keys. The snappiness of the keys. I like the size of the return handle. Nice big return handle. It's got a smooth carriage. And there you can see the output. It's hard to beat an Olympia when it has a soft platen, either an original soft platen or a newly recovered one as far as the output. Uh, if you just ignore the typos, you can see how great that script looks. Just about perfect impressions. So excellent typer, nice light pinky basket shift, and quality output. Hard to ask for a better machine than this for doing some serious writing. One other note about the typeface. I did a little type sample there. I like this script machine because you can type in either black or red. Or if you have black and green, you can type in black and green or blue and green. Sometimes, or a lot of times on typewriters that have the script typeface, the typeface is too tall and it would be too tall to type either in red or black and so it would cross over the line so they didn't give you a color option that was either stencil or black this one the typeface is a little bit smaller and so you can you can type script in either black or red or whatever your two color options are so that's kind of a nice feature so real quickly just some pros and cons the pros would be the Amazingly good condition of the body Just uh, no scratches at all Nice and clean. It's been clean tuned and adjusted Fairly easy to get apart for cleaning and maintenance or if you don't want to take it all the way apart the This cover just pops right up and you can do a lot of cleaning without taking it off on this particular one If you want to get the ribbon cover off you got to remove some C clips so Still, overall, pretty easy to get apart for cleaning and maintenance. Like the color style with the green, teal, platen knobs and shift keys, and the white keys, I kind of prefer that to the later SM8s that have the gray keys and gray platen knobs. Another plus is the script typeface that is small enough that allows you to type in both red and black. Another pro is the nice soft platen. Don't have to worry about that uh, getting recovered. Another plus, it does have a paper support. It's not the pop-up uh, type of the spring, but it's hard to beat this as far as reliability. And well, I think that's about it for the pros. The nice big return handle is kind of nice. And it does have a smooth carriage and a nice loud bell. So I had a hard time coming up with any cons really, I guess. If you're using tabs and resetting them frequently, you might want to have an SM9 instead of the SM8 because it has the key set tabulator. But really it's not that big a deal just to turn it around and 
move your tab stops manually. So that's a plus or a minus depending on your perspective. I kind of like the manual tab stops as opposed to the key set tabulator. But if you move them around frequently and you want a key set tabulator, then that would be a negative. And I don't know, I guess if you like the styling of the 1950s curvy typewriters with chrome accents, then this wouldn't be for you because it's a more modern design, but it's absolutely rock solid, just as heavy, just as good of a typer as the earlier models. And it has the added benefit of the basket shift. So that's a plus. Very few negatives or minuses about this machine. Thanks for joining us in Typewriter Minutes. Make sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye.